latest in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. everybody and hey we we're live at least i hope so goodness gracious i'll tell you what oh i am working too hard i am working way too hard but hey very happy to have you with us here today in case you can't tell yeah we're we're not in the house anymore yep we are here at quan international big thanks to christina and Vinny for hosting the show up here of course the home of project all in as well Make sure you guys go to projectallin.com. We're having a party up here. Christine, what's the date? The, October 26th? October 26th. Yeah. We'll let you know the time. But if you want to come up to the Speedway while there's the drag racing's going on, it's going to be a blast. And you're going to get the, if you're lucky, you might get to play some poker on the show, too. Uh, Christina's crazy enough to let me do commentary on that. So check it out. and Check out Quan International and, of course, Project All In. But, hey, it is a privilege to be back on the air with you. Uh, of course, we've been doing the KLAV show for a couple of days, or a couple of weeks, I guess, on uh, 1230 a.m. here in Las Vegas, having a great time with that show. want to give thanks to Mike Sexton and, of course, Gavin Smith for joining us on there, along with Christina and Marco coming on there, and Joe. Uh, it's been a great time so far. And now we're back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Let's take care of some business before we get to our first guest who's kind of hiding over here. I've got a comfy chair for I can't, you know, I'm going to move him. I'm going to move him in here, though, because I, 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 I don't, I, I want Tom to be comfortable. We're going to be talking to Tom McAvoy here, of course. One of those few privileged individuals to have won the main event at the World Series of Poker. So we'll get to, we'll get to Tom here in just a second. We've got Jesse Caps hanging out here, too. Did a little work for Poker News, and uh, he's not too bad of a player from what I've heard. He's kind of an interesting fellow, though. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how Jesse goes tonight. We also got the Miami boss coming on tonight. Dan Swade's going to be calling into the show. That's always a good time. So make sure you hang around for that. And we also have a tournament coming up here on the show as well on our Poker Stars home game. Club ID 629454. Password is now Roguewire. I got it right the first time. I honestly have been saying that on the show for a year and a half, and I didn't butcher it the first time out. I feel good. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. I needed some sort. Of, I got to turn your mic on, too. While you're oh, yeah, we're on. But, uh, of course, we want to thank all of our great sponsors of the show that made this possible out here. Big thanks to our good buddies, Blind Squirrel Apparel. I got the hat sitting right here. I got a sweatshirt hanging out. Make sure you go to blindsquirrelapparel.com. We get 20% off with the code HOKE. So get over there. Good, Look good and be lucky with blindsquirrelapparel.com. And I want everybody out there right now, do me a favor. Go to Final9Comic.com. You ever see a poker comic book, Tom? No. Well, there's your chance. Go to Final9Comic.com. Our good buddy Anish has got a great, uh, the first issue preview up on the site. All you got to do is give them their email. Off you go. And you get to see nine players becoming one, just like you did. Just like you. Even though I think it's going to be a little crazier. I think it's going to be a little crazier. But uh, go over to, to final9comic.com. Also, of course, uh, man, there's so many. So I got so many sponsors, Jesse. I lost track. Jesse's kind of hanging out over here, too. Um, we have, uh, of course, our good friends at 3Bet Clothing. Make sure you go to 3Bet.com. We got a 15% off code with code RADIO on that one. Uh, Team Poker Joker also has some awesome apparel. And you can become a member of Team Poker Joker. It's insane. I don't know what he's doing over there. But go to TeamPokerJoker.com for some unique apparel. I mean, you might have seen it at the World Series with the, the Joker logo on there. Great stuff. And you become a team member, too. So go over to TeamPokerJoker.com. Good friends at Arctic Blue, the cooling towel. Jesse, did you see a cooling towel yet? I got to give you a cooling towel at some point. They are awesome. Uh, hashtag yeah, hashtag swag. Go to <laughs> ArcticBlue.com, B-L-U. Say hi to the bear, and you're going to get 15% off plus free shipping. And Casino Xander, I'm going to move him in here in a sec. We'll get him. Um, but uh, make sure you get over there to arcticblue.com. Also, we're going to hear from Doug Hull tonight, the Poker Please You Can Use. Great new book. If you haven't read it, Doug was selling them like hotcakes of the World Series. You can get your copy, too. Go to threebarrelbluff.com. 25% 25 off. I got everybody 25% off. 
I can't do much better than that other than free. So make sure you go to threebarrelbluff.com, put in the code KLAV, of course, our real radio home, and check that out as well. And, of course, a great support here from Project All In, the Nevada Poker League. You can you know, play some great free poker here in Las Vegas. Make sure you check that out. Always a great time. Jesse, you, you should play in the NPO. I, th- I think Tom. Tom's a little – well, no, Tom could – he'd probably play a little uh, free poker every once in a while, don't you, just for fun? Here, I'll, I'll move you in a little bit then. <coughs> yeah. I go to uh, charity tournaments and sometimes uh, – actually, we don't totally play for free, but we'll play like a, a dollar a hand, you know. Uh, with some of my friends, yeah, or you can't even bet. You're just putting in a dollar, and then you're drawing cards and doing whatever you have to do. Awesome. So go have some fun at the Nevada Poker League. I mean, this is we have so much happening here in Vegas, and you know we're still kind of sorting everything out here, as I'm sure everybody knows. It's it's been a a long journey to get out here and get back on the air. Of course, uh, last time we did the internet show was at the World Series of Poker, so it's been a while. Mm-hmm. We're Good to go. I want to thank everybody for their support, and thanks for doing it. I see everybody starting to pop in here to the show, too. So thanks for joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show. Now, I, got, I, I, I didn't mess up any promos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. Hey, but uh, we want to make sure we mention a little bit of poker news going on, and we'll get to discuss everything happening in the poker world. And I can't wait to get your opinions on some of the stuff that's been happening here lately. Uh, of course, Jackie Glazier, we got to give her a big congratulations, winning the ladies' event over at the World Series of Poker in, in uh, Europe. That's just getting underway, and Jackie took it down. Of course, she was the last woman standing in the main event this year, and Jackie decides, you know what, I'm going to take some revenge here. I'm going to head over to uh, head over to uh, Paris and take that thing down. So big congratulations to Jackie Glazier. Couldn't have happened to a better lady and uh, very excited for her. Knocked off Mary, Mary Line Valente and Jackie picks up 21,850 pounds for her efforts. Uh, we do have a rebuy event underway over there as well and it uh, looks like event number three is also kicked off here pretty shortly. So we'll follow that along for you as the time goes on. Of course, the November 9 is getting ready to roll off here soon and we're going to be there live for God knows how many hours. It's going to be scary as hell. Oh, God. Last year was ridiculous. Tom, how long was your final table? It's still the record for the main event. Uh, not for a single World Series event. I think uh, Chip Reese and Andy Block set that record uh, a few years ago in the horse event. But for the main event, my final table heads up. I'm just talking about the heads up portion. What, uh, around seven and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. That's unreal. That is unreal. That's, Our, that's when the tournament was only f- four days. It actually <laughs> went into the fifth day. Oh, unbelievable. Because I remember this year, Matt Waxman went about seven and a half hours. Yeah. And I was there for most of that, watching him. I can't imagine what that is like to be playing for a break. Now, and, and this isn't just a bracelet. You're playing for the World Championship for seven and a half hours. Mm-hmm. It's up. What, what was that like? Well, actually, some of the news media thought that uh, we were deliberately stalling. But... When I got heads up, the blinds are only like uh, two and four thousand, and there was a million and uh, eighty thousand of chips in play. And when I was heads up, I had a, just under forty percent of the chips, and my opponent Rod Pete had a little over sixty percent of the chips. So I had to um, I switched gears. I just played a real tighter style mm-hmm. against them. And the reason I, I won is because every time I played a major pot. Uh, I went in with the best hand. I didn't get drawn out on. So, wow. so I, I, I was lucky because I didn't get unlucky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's the, hey, that's how you, what you have to do to get yeah. through it, right? I mean, you just have to not yeah. get unlucky the whole day. It's funny how I, you know, I can remember hands that I played. That was 30 years ago, and uh, don't ask me what I played yesterday. <laughs> I already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. Yeah, and, and of course, Tom. You know, we have the November nine coming up. Did, did have do you get to know any of those players in there? I'm sure you probably bumped into JC every once in a while. But yes, J, uh, JC Tran is the only one that I really know. And I mean, and I when I say no, I mean casually. I played with him a couple times, but other than that, uh, the other eight are strangers to me. Which, yeah, which is the same every year. Last year, I didn't know any of them. 
you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you got one this time. Yeah, this time there's one. Yeah, yeah it, it should be a very exciting, uh, exciting main event here coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. And, you know, take us back to what that moment was like for you when you won it. I mean, it, it, you know, not as, obviously not as much of the press as you have today, but still, I mean, the crowning achievement of anybody's poker career, you're, you've got your banner up in the, in the Rio and everything's, you know, you're, you get recognized as the main event champ forever. What was that like to win that thing? Well, I knew that when I won that tournament, and I had just won the limit holding tournament the week before, so I won, that's when they only had like 14 events, not the 60 some odd they have now. So I won the, the two biggest tournaments for the limit holding and the, the no limit main event, and I won them both in a week. I knew my life would never be the same. It wasn't so much after winning the limit hold'em event, but winning the main event on top of that, it's like, I knew a couple things. First of all, I'd probably never be able to duplicate it. Again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And when I, when I got to the final table and got down um, to the end, when I got heads up, I figured I'd better well win it this time. Exactly. I'll never get another chance, and I haven't. Uh, the closest I ever came since then was like about 40th. Um, but I've never uh, done drugs in my life, but I was on a euphoric high for a, probably about five days after I won the event. Because, I mean, I, it was like, I don't know how you describe it, like cloud nine. You know, I'm, I'm sure some people have experimented with drugs and maybe had a similar <laughs> high, but I, <laughs> I didn't touch anything. I just uh, took me a that long to finally come down from it. But I, I realized my, even back then, now again, I'm dating myself, this was 30 years ago, and I was 38 years old and I was not the um, oldest player by any stretch of the, at, at the final table. Mm -hmm. Now the, I'm, I'm, I was older then than the oldest player that made the final nine this time oh my god really yeah, yeah. oh my word that's yeah, incredible because there are, well it's it's the stamina issue has come into effect the last several years that's why it always seems to be the younger players getting there not the more experienced pros yeah you know it's an interesting contrast when you look at even the guys that are in in their you know i'm in my 40s and you know i was just had gavin smith on my my other show on uh, on a wednesday and it just seems like there's that that battle between the youth and the stamina against the experienced players who know what they're doing and have been in these situations before. And you know, more and more in the main event, it seems like the younger kids are able to pull it out. Is there, what, what needs to be done to change that? I mean, do you, you know, everybody's gonna have to start training more or what? Actually, I wrote a whole uh, column on that exact same subject for a Poker Player Magazine, who I do an occasional column for. And I feel that the way the World Series main event is run right now, you have virtually no chance if you're 40 and above to win that tournament. Really? Yes, because mm. you have to play, you get a day off after day one and day two for most of the players. Not all of them, but it depends on whether you play on the third day, starting day or not. But anyways, assuming you get two days off, after that, starting from day three on, there's no days off, mm -hmm. and you have to do a minimum of, t uh, you gotta do 10 hours every day, day after day after day, which means that you don't even get done till 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, after the break times are out, or over, and um, you don't have a whole lot of time to calm down and get a good night's sleep. Right. Definitely favors younger players and the stamina, and there's a way to avoid that. And, I strongly believe that if you want to make it a level playing field, if you don't, you want to leave it the way it is, fine. A level playing field would mean you'd have to play maybe eight hours a day instead of 10. And after, after uh, you've played, you get a day off after day one and day two, but after maybe playing days three and four, maybe another day off. In other words, take some more time off. Right, give everybody yeah. a chance and to rest and recruit. Yes, exactly. Even the younger players, I, I was reading their um, interviews, they said the same thing. The ones that made the final nine, they're all exhausted. These are the young guys. Now, what about the older guys? If the young guys are exhausted, can you imagine what it's like for the older guys? Yeah. Uh, I believe Dan Harrington actually said that he doesn't think anybody over age of 50 will ever win the main event again. 
I agree with that. Unless they change how they do it. Mm, that's a very good point. Very good point. So maybe they'll uh, maybe they'll take a look at that sometime. It'll be interesting. I mean, you know, you you made so many contrib great contributions to the game. You know, they should be listening to you a little bit. I would think. I mean, you, they you, never you've asked done your my share. Opinion. Nobody asked my oh. opinion. You did, but well, <laughs> see, but I know what I'm talking about. You know, I, I, hey, I, I, I know. So why I know. would they ask my opinion? <laughs> they think they already know it all. <laughs> well, well, you know, that's an interesting question. I mean, you, do the young players respect you and show that to you more, or do you find that that, that as time goes by, they they they're forgetting you for some reason? Some of them have uh, kind of forgotten me, but. When they see my picture up in the wall of the World Series, that finally reminds them that mm -hmm. you know I'm up there and that's where they'd like to be. Yes, but um, for the most part, uh, most of the younger players I've run into, I have to admit, have been respectful towards me. Mm -hmm. So I, I haven't really had too many problems in that area. You know, speaking of those banners, I'm curious to get your thoughts about what happened this year at the series with Russ's banner banner being covered up and. It oh, was last year, down. too. Uh, in my humble opinion, they both got what was coming to their banners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, in fact, they covered up Russ's banner, but they left his name. And they took down Chris Ferguson's altogether. I think they should just take him down. Or, or if they want to – I think it's almost more significant to, to just black them out and have their name. Because mm -hmm. they're sending a message there. That, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's so difficult that we've seen, you know, even some of the other main event champions have run into trouble lately. You know, Jerry and the tax issues. Um, you know, and I talked to him about that extensively on the show. And Jamie I feel Golden sorry for issues. him. He's one of the really good guys in poker, yeah. so it was just really unfortunate he ran into that kind of situation. But. Uh, some of the others that have run into a bit of a problem, I think they kind of brought it on themselves. You know, I guess we can all say that about anything that we is, did wrong. That we, is very we true. Probably, we kind of brought it on ourselves. You know. Yeah, so now, of course, we're back around again to the Hall of Fame nominations. You're there again. Now, you, you said this is the fifth year in a row they've had that you've no, been nominated. Yeah, they've had public nominations plus the select committee, the, whatever that select committee happens to be. And I have the record for uh, most nominations now. I've, done, I've been nominated every year, and I, of course I also hold the record for the most failures in the final <laughs> vote. <laughs> so I got two well, records. <laughs> well, you know, Susan Lucci got her Emmy event eventually. You know, and I, and I have to tell you that a <laughs> lot of people, when when I've talked to them about their ballots and you know, and just you know, the media and how they've been feeling about where you are in your candidacy, candidacy at this point, your name's coming up a lot, actually a lot more than it did last year. It it, it feels like it's close, and uh, you know, I, I but I can only imagine what you're going through because you know it's one of those things where you know, you've, I'm sure you've lost a few times, and you're like, you know, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't. It doesn't. But That's I know you. Want, I know you want in. <laughs> of I know course, how I want in. However, I'm going to tell you how much campaigning I did this year. None. None. Didn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't ask anybody to vote for me. I didn't ask anybody to nominate me. Um, if I get in, it's because people feel I deserve to be in, not because I buttered up people, so to yeah. speak, you know, kissed their butts. I didn't do any of that. So if I get in, I get in. And um, a couple times in the past years, I kind of wore my heart on my sleeve. I really felt, you know, that maybe I would finally get in, and then it didn't happen. So rather than getting my hopes up real high and then getting it crushed again, I've been kind of like, okay, all right. That's I'm more, I'm more blasé about it. Let's put yeah. it that way. Well, that's the, t that's the time when it always happens, though, isn't it? When you finally gave up and said, you know what? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The it's door, kind of where the door opens. It's like, that's how life goes. You know? like, like with relationships, when you right, stop exactly. looking so hard for one, it just happens. Right. <laughs> that's kind of what happened to me. I finally gave up, <laughs> and all of a sudden it happened by accident. <laughs> well, you know, the contributions that you've made to poker, I mean, I, I look at the group there, and, and the all-around resume that you have in terms of what you've done, main event champion, author of so many great books, a few of which are on my shelf. Thank you. I appreciate the money. And, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, the contribution of getting smoking out of the, 
out of the poker rooms. I mean, that is such a, a line of accomplishments that it's hard to believe you haven't gotten in yet for everything that you did. I mean, and, you know, let's talk about the smoking side of it. You know, tell everybody a little bit, if they, they don't know that story, how that all started and how you pulled that off. Well, I hosted the first non-smoking tournament in Nevada way back at uh, Sam's down here in Las Vegas in 1999. It was the first time. And, uh, of course, a lot of the smokers said they'd boycott it and all this. Well, here's what, here's what really happened that first time it happened. People that couldn't stand the smoke came back. You know, there was... Mm -hmm. The vast majority of poker players don't smoke anymore. It used to be the other way around. Where now it's at least 75% of the players don't smoke. Right. So we need to breathe. And even, <laughs> even the smokers, once they got used to non-smoking tournaments, liked the cleaner air. And they didn't have to quit smoking, just have to take it outside. And I mean, can you imagine the, all these tables and 2,000 players sitting in a, in a tournament at the World Series, sometimes there's more than that. If that room allowed smoking, would it be like? Horrible. Well, it, mm. after that, it was still a slow process. It, I was, for the worst 53 days of my life, I was the card room manager at uh, Binion's <laughs> under the bad old Bainans, not the Binion's, the Bainans. Okay. And that's Becky and her husband and so forth. So I got hired there and I took the job mainly because I, I knew I could, um, get my own structure in and schedule for the World Series of Poker, and I knew how I, this is really what I wanted to do. So I, I took a shot at it, and of course, uh, the Bainans were not the best people, is the best I can mm -hmm. say. And I had nothing but total respect for Jack Binion and his father and so forth, but, uh, Benny Binion's grandson, Benny Jr. or whatever I think you want to call him, um, played poker, and he was a smoker. But I said, all right, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you some free poker lessons if you allow the tournament. This was, I was hired in 2001 for the 2002 World Series mm -hmm. to go non-smoking. He says, okay, he agreed to it. Wow. So the 2002 World Series which is not totally ancient history, uh, although it might be for these 20-some-year-old hot right, shots, yeah. <laughs> uh, was, went non-smoking for the first time, although they did allow smokers on the rail, which means it defeated some of the purpose. Hmm. But it was a start. Yeah. And then after that, every subsequent World Series, it got better and better and better. And then when Harris took over and then moved it to the rail, that was a huge step forward for... World Series. Of course, that was the only reason they wanted to buy Binion's because it was pretty run-down, seedy downtown casino that they'd let deteriorate pretty mm -hmm. much. But the World Series having that, they had the vision of what to do with it, where <clears throat> the Bainans didn't. They didn't even like poker players. They always hired, <laughs> I was told how much they didn't like poker players. <laughs> huh. <laughs> That's, and they're hosting the biggest tournament in the world. <laughs> Jeez, go figure. That was, that was, I mean, go figure is right. Well, so. you know, and I think it's interesting because when you, when you look at, at, at you doing that, it really, I think, created a stage of evolution in poker for the average player to come into the game. Because had that not taken place, let's say smoking was still allowed at the World Series of Poker. A lot of players that can't handle the smoke had a health issues. You know, a lot of you know, a lot of women that, that started coming into poker didn't like the smoke. It really opened the game up at that stage, you know, before online did what it did and the moneymaker effect. Absolutely. So your contribution really opened a, a, the game up to a ton of new players and I think people forget that other than just the there's no smoke in well, the I, had, I had help. A lot of us lobbied at various poker venues with petitions and so forth. So I, I wasn't like the Lone Ranger here. I don't try to take full credit for this. Uh, I, I said my biggest contribution was that first non-smoking tournament in Nevada and, and helping the World Series go non-smoking in 2002. Mm -hmm. But to get it elsewhere, which was really the, the ultimate goal, was to get it universal in the poker world. 
you know, I had to have a lot of help, and I did. Talk to us about the books. You've written so many books, Tom. Uh, you know, what, what's your favorite one out of all of those? Probably, the f- it was actually the second book I wrote. It's called the Championship Tournament Poker, and I did that one basically on my own. Then right after that, and that was very successful, way more successful than I thought. That's when I got the idea with my editor, uh, Dana Smith. She's the one who talked me into doing it. I'd, I had done a book 10 years prior to that, two years after I won the World Series, came out in 1985. It didn't amount to much, but it was the first one on tournament poker. And I had been approached by Mike Carroll and Stanley Solitikoff. Solitikoff owns the poker player a newspaper. Of course, everybody knows who Mike Carroll is. And Carol was kind of his right-hand man. So they talked me into doing this book. I never even thought about writing a book. So I, I recruited a friend of mine, Roy West, who's kind of retired now. Um, and he worked with me on the book. I needed kind of an editor. So I went 10 years after that book. Didn't make any money on it. Hmm. Before I got approached by Dana Smith to do a second book. She had written um, a couple of books using the pseudonym Shane Smith because she was afraid if she used a female name, it would interfere with sales. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, huh. she really felt that. And she might have been right, I don't know. But she had written a few books and then she approached me and the first time I saw her, I didn't know her from Adam and I kind of brushed her off. And then fortunately for both of us, she came back about nine months later and asked me again, this time, things weren't going too good in my life, <laughs> like mm-hmm. financially. So I decided, well, what the heck? So I starved for seven months. That's how it took from the start of that book till it actually was in print, wow. available for sale. I starved for seven months. So that second book was came out in 1995, and she gave me a projection of what she thought we would make. And even before the book was finished, I was approached by Eric Seidel and couple other players he represented offering $25,000 to me if I wouldn't publish the book because he felt I was giving out too much new information. Really? Really, yeah. But wow. I wasn't going to work that long and hard on a book and then just not publish it. So, I don't know, hard to believe, right? I got lots of stories. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, no, hang on. I, so, so, Eric Seidel and a couple other players, Yeah. knowing you know, knowing how talented a tournament player you are, came up to you. They heard about this book. They went yeah. and said, "Don't do this." Yeah, don't I mean, publish. it's kind of similar what happened to Doyle, right? Because a lot of people didn't want Doyle to put yeah. super system out. They were furious about it. So it's, you went through the same thing. Yeah. Well, they, 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 it's not like I didn't have the reputation that Doyle Brunson did. So I was, it was not like uh, I was under the type of pressure that Doyle probably was. But I, it was to me like, no, I just, I, I'm not going to put seven months of my life into a, a book and then, you know, if it sold 10 copies, I was still going to put it out there and, you know, for whatever it was worth. What were they so worried about? I wasn't worried. No, what well, were they, they worried about? Well, at the time, there was nothing written on tournament poker. We're talking, this is 1995. Mm-hmm. Now, there's all kinds of stuff out there now, you know, but we're, we're talking, uh, last century you know this is yeah. like 18 years ago <laughs> and there was there was nothing out there then you know this was before the internet and all this information was widely available so this gave players some insights into tournament strategy things that they had never even uh, thought about basically or so the book sold remarkably well. I was surprised myself. We were self-published, and so I didn't have to go through a, you know, a, a publisher where I was getting only a portion of the royalties stuff. So I made a lot of money off this book, with, which I shared 50%, 50-50 with Dana, because she did all the editing, and I, I produced the material. And, um, and she gave me an outline first I was struggling because I didn't have a good outline and she worked and she worked her tail off and earned every dollar she ever made so once that happened I took a year off from writing books and then Dana says well you know 
you're friends with T.J. Cloutier, aren't you? I said, yeah. And, and T.J. was at the height of his career, one of the greatest tournament players of all time, and one of the greatest no-limit players in particular. Why don't we see if he's interested in doing a book with us? So we did. So that was, our, that was probably my second favorite book, mm -hmm. Championship uh, No-Limit and Pot Limit Hold'em. Back then, they actually spread pot limit hold'em games, which they don't anymore. Yeah. No limit has taken complete control. But back then, there was more pot limit games, cash games, than no limit games. Now, the only pot limit games you see are, as far as hold'em goes, are in the either mixed games or in the um, tournaments at the World Series. There's a couple of pot limit tournaments. So that's what we did. And that book was successful. So. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm making all this money writing. <laughs> okay, so we kept going. I wound up doing uh, four books all together with TJ, and I branched out and did a couple more with Brad Doherty, and, and I, I did a couple with Dana, and it just, I wound up with, I don't even know how many, 14 or 15 books all together. So, but nothing uh, recently, and, um, I'm actually am working on like an ebook right now. People don't buy books like they used to. Right. Yeah. So I'm working on an ebook, but it's more of a both poker and philosophical book. It's like little bits of wisdom. It's not it's not a hard read or anything like that. And it's not a strategy per se. It's more of a life thing with poker connections to it. Yeah. What so, are well? What are some of the pit the pitfalls that you see players falling into now that, you know, if you can mentor them and say, look, you know, don't do this, don't do that, that you would recommend to some of these guys? These young guys that have tremendous success in their 20s, they literally think they're bulletproof and it's going to continue forever. And some of them are what I call one tournament wonders. They have one magic tournament where everything goes right. So on, on a given day, it's like in the National Football League, on a given day, a, a bad team can rise up and beat a good team. doesn't happen all that often, but it happens once in a while. Well, there's definitely a luck factor in poker. So some of these players, they'll have tremendous success overnight in, a, in one, maybe even two tournaments, and then uh, they, they overrate themselves, and they don't put anything away like for a rainy day. So they just... Um, some of them use what I call the Eskimo Clark <laughs> money management <laughs> strategy, which is play as high as you can for as long as you can until you go broke and then start all over from the bottom. <laughs> That's what he's done. That's great. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, and I think that happens. You know, when you're when you're so young and that much money gets dropped in your lap, you know, uh -huh. you win a few hundred thousand or a million dollars. You know, you're too young to appreciate it and really know what to do with no. it. You know? and, and they they think it'll go on forever. And they're and when you're young, you think you're bulletproof. You know, they're not. And if they don't set some of it away, invest some of it, at least buy a house, do something with it. You know. Yeah, keep a roof over your head. Yeah, exactly. that's a start. Something. Yeah. So, you know, it's not always going to be good. You know. Yeah, because I'm you know over the years I'm sure you've seen a lot of you know a ton of hard luck stories and. You know, great oh. players that have collapsed. I mean, what what was the saddest player, you know, saddest player situation that you saw over the years? Hmm. Probably my good friend T.J. Cloutier. This was a guy that should have been a multimillionaire, but he had some very bad habits. Craps table being one of them, and um, he he just didn't really manage his money properly, and. He should have been extremely well off by now. I mean, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's twice been runner-up in the main event, and a couple other times made the top five. So um, I just think it's sad that, you know, he's okay, but he's not really very well off right, right now, or he should have been. He should have. He's, he won more tournaments than any other I'm talking $500 and up tournaments. He's won over 50 of those first prizes. It's an unbelievable number. Yeah. yeah. And even though there was smaller fields then, you know, anybody wins 50 of anything of that size, I mean, he should have been really in good shape. So, so I'm, I'm kind of sad. He and I are still very, very good friends. And if, in fact, if I do get uh, 
inducted into Hall of Fame this year, I'll probably ask him to come down and give my little induction speech. But I'm still, I feel bad that he, he didn't turn out as successful, at least financially, as he should have been. As a player, he was always tremendous. When I saw him lose to the, in the year 2000 to Chris Ferguson, and Chris Ferguson had this huge chip lead on him when they were heads up, about eight to one, nine to one, and TJ actually took the lead on him. And then, then Ferguson fought back a little bit and took a slight lead. And then they played a pot that had about 90% of the chips in the Larry last in hand. And TJ had ace queen and Ferguson had ace nine. And the nine comes at the river. And Ferguson is now the new champion. And everybody's watching Ferguson, and I'm watching TJ. Yeah. Now, you know how heartbreaking that had to have been? He showed not a shred of emotion. I mean, chagrin, sadness. He got up, he shook Chris's hand, and they asked him, you know, he says, well, that's poker, you know, about that river card to yep. beat him. So how sad is this? Because look what's happened oh, to Chris yeah. Ferguson. I mean, that, boy, you yeah. tell that story, and then you think about what has transpired since with Chris. Oh, I mean, you boy, you. you'd rather, boy, you'd, you'd way rather see TJ's oh, portrait up there yeah. on the wall than, I, than Chris I was, at this point. I, I swear I must have felt worse than he did, you know, seeing how close he had come. And it was just that one card – one river card away from being the world champion that yeah. year. And so close. He's still an TJ. Still an amazing player, though. He had another oh, deep run great. this year. I mean, he's incredible. He he cashed several. I think he has about. He didn't play that many events either. I think he cashed maybe three of them this year. You know, he didn't make any kind of a run in the main event, but he did well in some of the others. Yeah. Other. So he's still a hell of a player. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't think I don't think too many people would want to sit across the table from him. No, he's uh, he, I mean, he's also because he's such a physically big guy. He's about six four, about two sixty or so. I mean, he's old now, aren't we all? <laughs> but he's got, has a such an intimidating presence about him that uh, I think that certainly works in his favor at times. Yeah. yeah, and he's still a great player and a commanding personality too. Oh yeah, he's he's hard not to like. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so, so you know, it, it, it's amazing just looking back over all this, and you know, it, it, it's so great to get to talk to you. I mean, I, I mean, I know we could sit here all day talking about the all these poker stories forever and ever. We have scratched the surface. Oh, I know. Well, maybe we'll do maybe we'll do a weekly Tom McAvoy segment. We'll just have you come in and tell <laughs> Tom McAvoy story time. We'll just do that. I could do that. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, so. Well, Tom, what are you up to now? You know, for, for anybody that hasn't been following you, what's been, what's been going on with you in, in terms of the poker world and, and everywhere else for that matter? Well, I'm pretty well, um, I wouldn't say retired, but I'm kind of like semi-retired. In other words, I still play, but, um, and I'll play quite a bit up during the World Series of Poker. But I don't travel anymore. I used to go all over. I used to be going maybe five months a year out of Vegas, traveling all over the place. I don't do that anymore. Um, since Black Friday it shut down the internet, I lost my position as a team pro for Poker Stars. Something I really am sad over. I mean, I would love to be connected to them again because mm -hmm. I thought uh, they were the heroes of Black Friday because they try to do everything right, pay everybody off as soon as they could, and so forth. The exact opposite of, shall we just say, full tilt, yes, and UB and absolute and all that. Uh, you know, they were the good guys compared to these people that took people's money and kept it, basically. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And then they bought out Full Tilt with the idea of reimbursing the players, and, and our U.S. government's infinite wisdom has done nothing but throw monkey wrenches into that little plan. It's been so, a terrible time oh for the U.S. Oh, my God. God. I, I can only imagine what you're thinking right now with everything happening with the government, including that. How can they be such morons? Our U.S. <laughs> government, when they're looking for tax revenues, and here these the industry is saying, please tax us, please regulate us, just let us operate. And what is our government doing? You're criminals. You're money laundering. Mm. You're doing this. You're doing that. Oh, my God. It's just absurd. It is. It is. You know, but it's, it's kind of like this. Our government was founded by geniuses and run by idiots. Yes. <laughs> Very well put. Very well put. 
But hey, at least got some online coming back. You know, it's just yeah. some some bright little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. They're coming. I signed up for uh, the WSOB.com during this summer, and then I had to wait till mid-September before they actually went live for live play. I don't waste my time playing play money. Mm -hmm. So um, then I ran into a few more snags, like uh, you have to have a certain phone. Sprint, you know, which right. is a major carrier, yeah. they won't accept Doesn't Sprint. Doesn't count. Cause, no, <laughs> I had to go out. And I finally settled on Cricket, who <laughs> it sounds like an insect, not a phone. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I I paid 50 bucks for the phone and like 35 bucks a month just so I could play online on WSOP.com. Okay, so I finally got my money and I took some problems just trying to get it deposited. I finally accomplished all that, finally got the play. And then there's one other little glitch um, there's not very many games, <laughs> right? And uh, the biggest game on the sites are two four no limit and two four pot limit Omaha, and they don't have those every day. So um, until they can hook up with other states, like New Jersey, would be a good example. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, California down the road. You know, it's it's just not going to go anywhere. Right. You can't just have Nevada residents. It's just not enough, not enough business. Yep. Yeah. So we're still made steps in the right direction. We're the first, you know, state in the nation to allow it, but it still needs a lot of uh, additional players. And the only way you're going to get that is to go beyond our borders of Nevada. Right. What's your username on there in case anybody wants to play? You mind giving it out? You don't have to if you don't want to. If you don't want to, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I use my, my dog's name is Suki, S-U-K-I. So I'm using Suki. This is very clever. 1983. Oh, there you go. You know, 1983 was the year I won the main event. <laughs> right, exactly. So nobody's made that connection yet. And then now. <laughs> <laughs> we gave away a secret here, too. How about that? But a friend of mine, Dan Elspa, is his name, he, he plays his broom corn on, some, on the other side, uh, the uh, the station's casino site. We signed up for WSOP.com also. D knew what name he chose there? Get this, McAvoy. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> serious? <laughs> he's, he's playing as oh, people really great. think it's me. And, and nobody yet made the connection until I just gave it away here. Uh, that, that Suki 1983 is really me. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> well, so if you want to get a chance to play against one of the all-time greats in the game. <laughs> there you go. Suki1983. Check him out at WSOP.com. Tom, first, you know, and you're welcome to stick around. We're going to be having a couple more guests here. If you want to hang out, more welcome to, I think we're grilling out there, too. But you guys out there, I'm going to look in the camera right now. You guys that are voting, this is your guy. All right? I'm on the Tom McAvoy bandwagon. I know who you people are. I'm going to hunt you down. <laughs> All right? So give Tom Thank some you. sevens and eights on there, maybe a couple of tens. Get this man in the Hall of Fame. He deserves it. Tom McAvoy. Thanks, Mark. A pleasure and an honor always yeah. to get to talk to you. And thank you for coming up for my first show up here. I'll be back. All right. Tom <laughs> McAvoy, everybody. There you go. All right. We need to get a commercial break in here. But, wow, that was a great conversation with Tom. Unbelievable. So let's take a quick break, and we will be right back. we got Jesse Caps hanging out here. He's going to be popping in and out on the show. And we got the Miami boss calling in here, too. You ever met the Miami boss, Tom? Oh. oh, Jesus, you would if you you know if you did. <laughs> how, how long does your show go on? Oh, I'm on until 9 o'clock. Oh, man, you... I'm, a, I'm, you a, I'm insane. Three hours? Woo. Yeah, well, I've got, do that? Well, we got a tournament. Well, we got a tournament. would give out. Well, we got a tournament coming up here, too. Tom, I'm, I've done, like, 14-hour shows. I'm Three oh is, God. like, nothing. nothing. Yeah, I have a... When I'm talking a lot and, and especially teaching and stuff, I, if I talk about 30 minutes straight... I held up good tonight, but usually I got to start taking cough drops. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, man. Get sore. No, I, I was I didn't fine mean, tonight. Okay, good. No, I didn't want. I, I, I didn't want to hurt you. This is the stuff that's fun for me. I like doing this. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get a, our commercials in. We will be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Stick around, everybody. Right back, Jesse Caps and the Miami Boss Plus. Get in that tournament. Club ID is six two nine four five four on PokerStars.net. Password is RogueWire. All right, once again, 629-454, password is RogueWire. All right, stick around, everybody. We will be right back. 
one man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom designed table that reflects your style and game. Off tilt makes it easy to design a truly one of a kind custom poker table that'll give you a home table advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom-crafted, furniture-quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.offtiltpokertables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262-490-3812. We'll show you why Off Tilt is the only way to play. Turn up the electricity on your computer by going to RogueWire.com. News, sports, current events, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show, plus much more. Like us on Facebook and follow RogueWire on Twitter to stay up to date and let the sparks fly off your screen. Check it out. RogueWire.com. Want to be a millionaire? Then see if you can become Fantasy Sports Royalty in the 2013 Fantasy Football Millionaire Grand Final at DraftKings.com. Play for free or in paid contests for real money, plus games last one day, so there's no long-term commitment. Thousands of winners have won over 10 million prizes on DraftKings.com, and now it's your turn to cash in. Go to DraftKings.com right now, enter the promo code HOKE, and get a 100% deposit bonus and a free entry into the Millionaire Grand Grand Final Qualifier. So don't wait. Crown yourself the king of fantasy sports at DraftKings.com. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the final nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. 
Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch on October 21st, 2013. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. God, I love having that pro radio stuff. You didn't get to hear that, Jesse. That's too bad. It's just cool. Instead of me doing all this, I get people to do this stuff for me. I get The Mark Hoke Show. Yeah, all right. It's awesome. It's so awesome. I love it. Hey, thanks for being with us, everybody. And I I got to apologize to some of my listeners out there. That music will fade out shortly. There it goes. I have to apologize to some of my listeners out there because I forgot to do one thing at the top of the show. Are you ready? Oh, dear. Opa! So you guys in the chat box, all my Greek friends, I am Greek and Casino Examiner, all you kids, thanks. And by the way, see, Lee Bradbury's in there saying he came for the free beer. Not to hear Mark talk. Where's the beer? Lee, get your ass out here from Indiana. It's right over there in the fridge. Or you can come to Project All In on the 26th. So there you go. So, Lee, there, that's it. Thanks for being with us, guys. We're having a great time here tonight on the Mark Hoke Show. As we, you can see, we're at Quan International. we got the boxing ring back there with the poker table in it for Project All In. And I'm in a nice, got a nice little blind squirrel apparel hat there. Yeah, well, I'm... I, sp- I should. I, I should. Yeah, I should turn that mic on for you, Jesse, and I do apologize for that. Jesse Caps here. Jesse, what's up? Nothing much, man. I'm excited to come see you again, man. On the the first 399th show or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> All right. I, I still. Am, what should I do? Should I number from the last ones, or should I just say this is number one? What do you think? Number one. Just Absolutely. make it number one. All I right. See, I was on your first internet channel. <laughs> 399th show? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> not so much. All right. Done. See you later. All right. So this is number one. I'll be labeled. God, I got to <laughs> label this number one. But it seems like I lost a baby there, man. It's like, <laughs> oh, the, the big numbers. That's okay. Well, when I do the resume, I'll say I did that many shows. But that's this is number made one. to be broken. That, that is <laughs> a good point. Well, Jesse, of course, a lot happening since, you know, over the last two months. Yes. Since I got to see you before. I want to start with, uh, you know, I gave Christina a shot at this on the KLAV show. The first card off the deck rule. My God, everybody Perfect. is pitching a fit about this. And, you know, for the life of me, I don't know why. What? How do you feel about that? That's actually something I wanted to talk about because it's, it's something that I feel pretty strongly about. Because, um, I mean, I'm a player as well. And uh, I tournaments, you know, especially tournaments, for me, for me personally, um, I'm one of those people that gets up, whether it's I have to use the restroom a bunch, I have to go talk to, you know, a bunch of my friends that are playing the next table. I'm always sweating, whoever I know. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, because ha- tournaments for me, I mean, I'm taking it seriously, but at the same time, I'm there to have fun. Mm-hmm. And f- some of that fun is, you know, railing your friends and, you know, you know, just, you know, goofing around. And if you're sitting at the table, for me, I don't want to be the guy in the hoodies, you know, in the glasses, not saying a word, sitting there staring, you know, waiting for that next hand, you know, focus, you know, I, I want it to be lighthearted and stuff. I want to be, get everybody out of their focus and not having them focus so hard so I can focus without, you know, being able to multitask. So for the first card off the deck really hurts someone like me. It really mm-hmm. does. Because I'm, you know, I, I ran a 515 mile in college. Like, I'm very fast. I will run back to the, to the table without, you know, without hurting myself or anybody else. And I will get to the before that. I always see that button and I see that second card come around and I'm like, I'm in that seat, you know. So uh, for me, it's, it's going to hurt because it's, you know, the first card off, they're just going to kill the hand. And I'm not looking forward to that. And I'm assuming that a lot of players that do, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of players like to get up and talk to their friends and they're turning around. And I think for me, you know, it's not going to be a good thing. So I'm, g- I'm going to fire the counter at you on this. Right. This is, you know, because I've been thinking about this a lot. The Instead of when you have to watch to see when that, that next card is going to be hitting your spot, now you got to watch when the pot gets pushed out or, you know, the, the cards get pulled in and get ready to get shuffled or, you know, grab another deck. Yeah. I mean, you know, in honesty, it's like 15 seconds. 
I mean, think about it. 15 to 30 seconds, maybe. Unless you're at the World Series and you have every, you know, fifth dealer that, that you know, is just learning. And uh, it could be a lot longer, but... Ish, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but 15 seconds. I mean, it's, it's not that long. You're right. I mean, I still, th I still think that, you know, it's going to... Here's another issue with it that I think is that you're going to have people who don't know the rule and don't know what's going on and the dealers that are enforcing the rule. It's going to... So, because I haven't had this issue come up yet, but I'm assuming that they deal all the cards out, and then they, they those two actually are dealt to that person, but then they slide them, take them away. You would take them away, yeah. They would have taken them away. So, but the player actually has a chance to grab them. Am I correct? Like, I mean, it, if they're, they, they no, just No, actually, no, I don't think they do. I think you, you have to be at your chair, but when at least at your chair when the that first card hits or your hand's going to get mucked no matter what. Let's so. say they come, they come back during the middle of the, sh of the deck. How far does the dealer uh, deal out the cards? Do they deal them right in front of themselves, or do they deal them out to the pl to the player? I think they still deal them out. Out to the player. So, yeah. the, so it's already here. So if that person gets there by the second time, mm. they nope. could you're done. But yeah, but I'm saying like the dealer is going to take those cards away from mm. from that player. Yeah. So that player might accidentally get a look at the cards. Good point. And now and now you have a hassle of them not knowing the rule. If they see their cards, they're going to get upset. Um, I mean, you're just you know y the dealer is going to have to remember. And also, I mean, which dealers are going to force it, which dealers are not. And it's kind of like a thing that it's just like, like, are my cards dead or are my cards live? When does the dealer announce that the cards are dead and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely there's some implementation issues yeah. that you could run into. So, you know, everybody does have to be careful with that. I mean, it, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, anytime you're playing any sort of game, you know, it's you got to know the rules. Yeah. So players are going to have to study up a little bit, but I'm, I'm sure so they're so going to be making time, announcements every, every next time year. You, every time you go to a casino, I mean, I don't know which ones are run by the, turn, by the TD, which mm -hmm. ones are not. Um, so they're going to have to find out what, what the rules are, which ones are the first card off the deck, right. which ones are not. So they're going to have to, they're, they're going to have to read. You know, I mean, I know that for most people, they go and they they sign up for a tournament, they sit down. When they buy into the tournament, does the tournament say this is a tournament that? first card off the deck i mean how do you know how are you usually know? usually they will announce that i mean and, and on the flyers it will say it, they follow tda rules okay. or not so most do but you know, I mean, now there are players there are places that don't yeah. so i mean most you know i'm just saying there's a quite a few people that don't necessarily read this you know they just show up for the tournament they don't show up necessarily on time a lot of people so they won't hear the announcement right away i mean so and every any time that cards get taken away from you those cards that you see right there, that are right there, that you want to grab, especially if you're in the blinds, which is, you know, a dealer button, you know, one of those important spots, you're, you're going to feel like you've been robbed. You're going to have animosity towards that dealer. You're going to have animosity towards the tournament. I mean, you're not going to feel good when you have a chance to look at, you know, everybody wants to be in action. Mm -hmm. So, when I mean, and you'll have negative, negative feelings, and, you know, it's not going to be the all, you know, lighthearted that it was before. Right. And, you know. So, no. Well. Be ready. <laughs> and you Be have, ready. You have a lot of these big, bigger name players that are, you know, like Daniel Legrand, and you know. Yeah, Daniel got <laughs> screwed over there. I think it was in Europe where he had the uh, the situation where he had his hand on his chair and they still killed his hand. I mean, it's just like and where he flipped out. So, so his hand on his chair, like I mean, where does exactly do you have to be? Yeah, you have to be at the chair, you know, right at your chair. So that should have he should have so, been okay on so that. Yeah. So it's just kind of like you know, I just think it's going to be a lot of floors getting called, and yeah. it's I mean. I don't know. I mean, and for me personally, it's because I'm I'm definitely running to the bathroom, but <laughs> I'm definitely uh, you know is going to have to be more careful about that. But we'll see if it sticks around, and uh, and I'll have to read which turn. You know, if I'm going to smaller tournaments that aren't necessarily you don't know which which rules. I mean, you know. Well, information is power. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. You yeah. know, when somebody else doesn't. Score that, for that, you, man. That is true. <laughs> Lee Bradbury uh, in the chat box saying WSOPC is not following first card off the deck rule. Wow, I'm surprised at that. I, I appreciate writing that because I'm going to the Tahoe event in a couple of weeks, and uh, so that is good to know. So that, that that surprises me though. I, I really does because yeah. you know the WSOP was supposed to be part of all this, and uh, hmm, interesting. Well, there you go. Well, look, the, now the uh, the November nine coming up, Jesse. Who do you like? Give it, give it to me right now. <laughs> give me, give me, give me your pick. <laughs> well, I'm been really inspired, and I mean, obviously, um, well, JC Tran, of course, but but my pick is somebody named Ryan Reese. And, uh, uh, oh yeah. And I mean, maybe it's the you know same age kind of thing, and uh, you know, 
probably one of the best players that is, you know, of the younger generation. But I mean, I was really inspired to read that he turned 50, t he, you know, he had like basically no money to his name and turned $50 into, I think he once won like 2000, just, he just got a little small cash or something. And then he turned that into a main event um, over in the Midwest. So, and then that turned into what, like 200,000, a little less than that. And then, you know, now he's getting to play for, you know, 8.5 million ish ish so yeah. i mean that's pretty inspiring and i mean when when i did uh go watch the uh final 18 when it, watch from final 18 to the final nine um all the all the people that i knew that were there were all ryan reese supporters so i got to sit there and uh you know get a drink with them and it was pretty ra rowdy there and i always liked the you know the crowd favorite the, the you know Whoever the you know whoever's yeah. the loudest, whoever is having the most fun, and, and that seems like he looks like someone who would be the entertaining uh, winner. Yeah, it, yeah, he definitely had the crowd support in there, that's for sure. <laughs> but you know, getting through J.C. Tran with a chip lead is not going to no, be easy. No, no, and I, like I said, I mean, you know, J.C. Tran, Amir Leavat, um I mean, you got some really good. You know, I don't think that there's anybody you can count out. No. I mean, the short stacks are pro. I mean, if if you had the short stacks be you know people that weren't players and they're just you know folded their way into it but you know david benefield i mean mark newhouse you know so you know you have good players that are the short stack so if, you know you can't count them out i mean no. statistically so i mean there's this i think this you know will be one of the i mean best best final table i mean e either jc tran will run away with it or i think or it's going to be very very tight and it's going to be very very good yeah, and you know, I, I think one of the interesting stories is you were there at the final eighteen, the the survival of Mark Newhouse oh, yeah. was just <laughs> unbelievable that he made it there at all with him being show. I mean, I think he was down with four big blinds if I'm correct somewhere in that ballpark yeah. with about twelve or thirteen yeah, to go, I mean, and they and they they let him in there. Oh, I forgot. Man. I forgot who made the loose call. Somebody made a really loose call and ended up not making the final table. Well, J J C yeah. Tran and Carlos Mortensen had that. The big hand where yeah. call it with I mean, which you know, debate that hand or not, but um, that definitely got you know got those short stacks like Mark in there, and it was you know he doubled up once, ten handed I believe. So, yeah. um, but I think yeah, because he had chips going into the final day. I think he was the chip leader at one point in the final day. I could be wrong, but I thought he he had chips, and then he moved you know he moved down and the got really short. But no, I definitely think that. Um, you know, he's, you know, I was watching he uh, WPT, I think he won, yeah, he won the WPT um, event season five or something like that. So I definitely think that he's going to be, you know, good to play as well. You know who I think is going to be fun to watch out of that group too? Who and that? he's going to be on the show once he gets back from Europe. Jay Farber. Jay Farber, I think that's who, yeah. That is that is one hell of a story there too. Oh, man. And, Club uh, promoter, come and, on. And I can, yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> hey, he's a Vegas guy <laughs> a Vegas out here. Vegas guy, you got to root for that. God, we get to say we're Vegas guys. I say I'm a <laughs> Vegas guy now, it's kind of fun. But, you know, Jay is a, a you know really nice guy, has a lot of great people, you know, backing him up too. I mean, you know, he's good friends with Jesse Sylvia and, and that troop so you know he's going to be he might ready. have the whole hakasan mgm come out and uh, <laughs> i think they should put billboards i mean they have like calvin harris or whoever is up there they put him right before the main event like <laughs> yeah it should be it should, it's going to be a very exciting final table i said we will be there broadcasting live uh, we're hoping to get set up on klav we gotta get a little sponsorship to do that but uh, it's going to be a, a great time at the november 9 it'll actually be my first chance to be in the penn and teller theater yeah finally Jesus Christ, you thought I'd been in there a long time ago. <laughs> but that is going to be something else. It's J.C. Tran, Amir Labat, Mark, Et Mark Etienne McLaughlin. Good guy there, and gonna, that'll be a player to watch. Jay and Farber, he, Ryan Reese, yeah. uh, Sylvain Loosley, Mikhail Brumelheis, Mark Newhouse, David Benfield. Mark McLaugh McLaughlin, I saw him during the series. He's sponsored, or he has some uh, blind squirrel stuff, I believe. Isn't he going to be, uh, or he was wearing that earlier, I think. I might have yeah. sneaked some to him. I can't remember. Yeah, I was I was sneaking some blind squirrel gear around yeah. to everybody. I think he, yeah, because I think I was writing about him earlier, but don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, you know some other news, of course, Jackie Glazier. Yep. What a great <laughs> story that is for Jackie. After you know, <laughs> if you were around Jackie when when she got knocked out of the main event, it was just a, a crushing moment for her, even though she had accomplished something incredible. Uh, but Jackie coming back and winning the ladies' bracelet over in Europe. 
unreal. I mean, oh, what yeah. a what a great what a great <laughs> story for her to pull that off. All smiles there. I see. Yes, <laughs> she's, like, she looks very happy. I mean, it's only like what twenty one thousand. I mean, it wasn't even that much, but just the sim- symbolism of it. You know, you could tell it meant it meant a lot. And a little, you know, of course, a little champagne in that nice <laughs> picture there too. But you know, one interesting thing that happened in that tournament, and unfortunately, I didn't get to, I forgot to ask Tom about this, but they were down to uh, nine players, and the bubble was eight for cash, and all the other players had agreed to put in like two hundred pounds to uh, to pay off that nine spot because they felt bad it was final table, but this person's not going to cash, and Jackie turned it down. Jackie was the only one to say no because she didn't want them, you know, didn't want the pressure or not being able to pressure so that bubble. So it just come out of their pockets. Yeah. Okay. So so she didn't want anybody to be able to not, you know, yeah. she, she wanted to keep the heat on that one last yeah. player. Yeah. And uh, so the deal didn't go through. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, because we, you know, we see that a lot where you, know, you get that, that one guy down there, you feel kind of bad and everybody chips a little bit in. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've, you know, in smaller tournaments, I've, I was short stack, and I don't. I don't like to put any money in for the bubble. I, 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 I mean, I sometimes get peer pressured, but I don't like to do it. I think I'm the I'm the best player in the tournament. I don't think that you know, you know, especially when it's 200 pounds. I mean, it's 18. That's 1800. I mean, or 1600 uh, for that ninth place finisher. It's just kind of like you know, I want you know, I want the most money. I think I'm going to win the tournament. I definitely don't think I'm going to bubble. I mean, I just you know, there's too many you know there's too many spots out there i mean mm-hmm. i mean there's like i remember just for an instance i uh there's se- it was seven people in the um it was like the daily deep stack of the rio you know those two pms yeah there's there was like 1600 people we got down to seven handed and i was like third blinds are ridiculous everybody has 10 big blinds but i mean so people were short but it was just kind of like i like you know they wanted to do a deal and I really, really did not want to because, you know, I, you know, the deal would give me 10000 but first place was like 25000 or something like that. And I really did not want to do it because I thought I was the best player. There was, there was two good players and the rest, you know, were very weak players. And, you know, but, you know, obviously there's probably been, you know, many articles written about, you know, you know doing deals and stuff like that. Right. And especially on the bubble. But, I mean, I think that's where the most skill take devolves is trying to figure out, you know, Giving you know what place you're in and uh, you know ICM and everything like that. You know if you're if you have weak players and stuff. You know they want they want that, you know zero or I mean it's amazing how much zero or a couple thousand is to like you know I mean you have the main event where it's ten thousand and stuff. But I mean in retrospect two th- two thousand you know the buy-ins what was the buy-in eleven hundred euros something like that. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. basically getting just double your money and it's just like people care so much about that bubble. I mean. And it's not even this one away from the bubble. That it's not even that big. It's a big deal, but it's like that bubble is just just the mindset of saying I I do not want to bubble this tournament, and people are going to play tighter. Right. And I mean, Jackie's a smart player to say no. And I would say any good player. I mean, unless you got you know unless you have no chips at all, basically, and you know it's obviously a mathematical no brainer. I don't think you should uh, be taking you know be giving money to to people and you know yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a great perspective on that. That's for sure. All right. Well, Jesse, I'm, I'm going to keep you around here for a while. All right. Because we have, we have plenty more show to go. Of course, uh, we're going to be on till at least nine o'clock and we'll have our Poker Stars home game tournament going on. PokerStars.net. We put up two events, I think, for everybody tonight. So uh, as soon as we uh, get through our interviews, you know, we'll uh, we'll be taking a look at that tournament, too. That'd be cool. We'll do, yeah. a, we'll do a little commentary on that. Bust out the sound effects. I know you guys missed them terribly. But uh, Miami boss is coming up here in five minutes. Sweet guy, oh, yeah. you know the Miami boss. Well, I, I saw I, I saw that, was, that he was going to come on, and I was hoping he was in in uh, in town. But oh, I, guess I was I was really excited to say hi to him. But uh, sounds like he's in uh, Florida. Of course, we he's we in haven't Florida. met. I mean, but maybe uh, I'll get to say hi to him today, and okay. he'll be. He's definitely a character that I um, got to write about, and it was fun to report on over the summer. Yeah, he's an amazing guy, and we're going to hear from Miami boss in just a little bit. So let's take another break. We'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show, and we are going to have the Miami Boss more with Jesse, our tournament coming up. Uh, Once again, that club ID is 629-454. Password is locked. Or ah, See, now I already (laughs) Rogue Wire, our new home here on the Internet. So uh, if you haven't gotten in there, I'll make sure I get this popped up so you guys can uh, get into the home game. Certainly appreciate it. So let's take a break, and Jesse and I will be back with 
The Miami boss. <laughs> yeah. Woo-hoo. Always a good time. Stick All around, right. guys. We'll be right back. Poker is more fun when you win. Most poker books are too theoretical. They tell you to be more aggressive but give few practical examples. Poker Plays You Can Use by Doug Hull, edited by Ed Miller, has 49 concepts with multiple clear examples from real, live, 1, 2, through 5, 10 games. Each hand is visually represented, explaining which players are vulnerable to these moves. Use discount code KLAV at 3BarrelBluff.com to get 25% off your copy. Paper and ebook available. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch on October 21st, 2013. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final Nine comic.com. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Turn up the electricity on your computer by going to roguewire.com. News, sports, current events, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show, plus much more. Like us on Facebook and follow RogueWire on Twitter to stay up to date and let the sparks fly off your screen. Check it out, RogueWire.com. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. And call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? Last summer, I was at the World Series of Poker every day and couldn't walk two steps without seeing someone wearing three-bet clothing. It's super comfortable and stylish, and all their stuff looks amazing. The incredible team of pros who wear three-bet hats, hoodies, tees, and more are a who's who in poker. All-time greats like Jonathan Little, Doc Sands, Brian Rast, Jason Kuhn, Scott Clements, Greg Mueller, Ben Tolerine, Jeff Gross, and, of course, Antonio Esfandiari, all proudly wearing the three-bet brand. They wear three-bet clothing because they know that being comfortable and feeling confident is crucial to winning on and off the tables. Threebet.com has shipped thousands of orders worldwide, and it's time for you to join the three-bet team just like the pros. Go to the number 3bet.com and receive an added bonus of 15% off with the promo code RADIO. Make that right call. Look and feel like a pro at threebet.com. Hey. 
This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back here on the Mark Hoke Show, live from Quan International, home of Project All In. If you're in Vegas, Jesse, you need to come up for the Project All In. You know, I turn your mic on the bottom, sir. Yeah, this is such a sweet setup. I love yeah. it. It is awesome. By the way, you know, I should, I have a sweatshirt over there from Blind Squirrel, and I and I didn't, you know, I, we were moving stuff around here, and I feel bad. Jesse, show, show that thing off for everybody real quick. Oh, it is it is dead sexy. I like it. Let's see. Yeah, if, if it oh, is upside wow, down. You got a big, big logo here. Yeah, That's you betcha. Awesome. 20% off you put in the code hoax, so make sure you check that out. And real quick, uh, Dan's calling in here, but uh, make sure that, uh, well, by the way, Lee, you should be in, the, in there already if you didn't lose your membership uh another thing for final nine comic follow them on twitter if you guys could do that for me real quick final number nine comic follow them right now they're also on facebook final nine and uh of course you can download the free issue the free first issue 10 be nine will become one one way or another <laughs> and i can't wait to see what the Hopefully other the women is win. those two women <laughs> yeah y- y- you know what i'm talking yeah, about I, know, right. I, I know i know exactly that. i'm excited to read them all right well let's get let's get the man on here the, this this is one of my favorite people in poker. I I am hello. Oh there he oh he is there. He's what really up, there. dude? Oh, it's the Miami boss, everybody. Dan, how you doing, my friend? Good, bro. Hey, very happy to have you on the show. Good to talk to you. What's been up since the World Series? You you Miami Boston? What's going on? Just chilling, man. Just chilling. Was in uh, Atlantic City. Played the uh, thirty five hundred. Turned into seven thousand, but <clears throat> I can't even see you though. Well, yeah, I don't have you. You don't have to be on video right now. I've, I've got, uh, I, 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 we're, we have a live shot going in here in the, uh, in the studio. So, but that's so, okay. But I could, but yeah, I mean, I. Am I on video or? No, you're. No, we're just. They're just hearing you right now, so you don't have to switch. All right, the cool, cool. Yeah. So yeah. even though you're looking good, you're looking Miami bossy. It's, yeah, bro. That's how we do it, bro. Camera oh. ready. <laughs> Oh man, Dan. And by the way, hey, I got to thank you for hanging out with us at the World Series this last year. Man, I tell you, it, you just know how to live life and have a great time, and it is always a pleasure to have you around. That's for sure. Yeah, bro, that's how we do it, man. Models and bottles. <laughs> Models and bottles. So, so what's going on in Miami? You know, I, I'm I'm sure you're partying it up. I'm sure you're having a great time. So, what's what's happening in Miami? Yeah, man, we're just partying down here. All all the tourists uh, coming down for like. All the snowbirds are coming down too. It's, it's a good time. Very awesome. Oh bad. So, how was the ten million dollar guarantee? By the way, of course, we weren't on the air when that that event happened. Blair Hinkle, of course, taking that down for one point seven million dollars. But man, what was it like down there at the Hard Rock? Dude, it was nuts, bro. Place was nuts. They just we, we, everybody. It was it was crazy, man. <clears throat> it was real fast structure at the beginning, so um, people were gambling and stuff. Some people buying in like. Like seven times and stuff. It was not, it was crazy. How many bullets do you fire in a tournament like that, knowing it's a ten million dollar guarantee? I mean, what what's the Miami boss line on that? Say enough's enough. Me, I like to chip up, um, but I, you know, I like to pick my spots too. Um, I was actually I, I was only in for one buy and I made it to day two, so it wasn't bad. But um, yeah, it was a great. I really, I really got a real bad table. I, I registered day one. I had a bad table, and uh, I tried to gamble a few times, but they didn't, they didn't let me. They didn't call me, so uh, it was, it, it, I couldn't really chip up that much. Yeah, but still, an incredible event, and they're going to do another one down there. It looks like in April, uh, WPT is planning on it. It's my birthday month. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that'd be a nice birthday present. Oh, nice one point seven. Oh my God, that's amazing. Well, let me ask you this, Dan, because I know you were you were so upbeat during the World Series, and you know things went okay for you out there. You know, I'm, I'm sure you would. I know you wanted to win a bracelet very badly. Yeah, you know, it was but, a bad bad World Series. But you know, at least. But now, what did you take out of this year's World Series? I mean, and and how's your how was your attitude the first couple of weeks after that finished up? After the World, uh, the World Series, I just. You know, I didn't make any final tables, so I was kind of disappointed there. And I played a lot of events, so I put, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into my game. And uh, yeah, just things weren't working out over there. I got like a 38th or something was like my highest, and uh, got in good a lot of the times. Just running, you know, I ran aces into queens, lost a bunch. 
uh, tournaments that way. I, I think I cracked out at, like, at least, I think, three tournaments with aces getting all in pre, so it's pretty sick. Oh, Jesus. But, um, yeah, it's just, I was pretty, you know, it wasn't, wasn't that great of, uh, you know, the World Series. This year, the fields were huge. It was, a, it was a, you know, a lot of great and, um, Great turnouts for all the turn like the you know the million maker. I mean, what was that? The money maker was a million maker. The millionaire maker, yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty sick tournament. Man, it was some sick tournaments. Shit, I I had, I had fun out there, but uh, yeah, it's just not it's, it's just not it's not a party if you're not winning a bracelet. You know, a bunch of my friends did well. I was happy for them. Yeah. By the way, we have a question in the chat box. So I'll I'll answer this real quick. Is the Miami boss wearing a baseball hat sideways? Uh, it's it's slightly off to the left. <laughs> It's well, because slightly... I have a headset. You know, you have a headset. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I couldn't be the only one without a headset. This is a, hashtag you know? hashtag Miami boss on the hat, though. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in red. Yes, it is. It is dead sexy. Hey, so if you guys are out there in Twitterverse, you know, start hashtagging Miami boss. Have a little fun with it. Maybe a maybe Dan will oh, answer yeah. a tweet for you. That would be that would be a day and a half. I'm actually more of an Instagram guy because I'm just so photogenic, and I, I you know, Twitter <laughs> doesn't do it for me. But. Fair enough. So look him up on Instagram too. I, yeah. Now I have to tell you. Now you were you were texting me like crazy over uh, about a month ago about something that was really really cool. And like can't I you can't I can't tell you I can't tell you. I'm like come on you can tell oh, me. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell anybody. You know I, I mean I keep I keep many secrets in the poker community. It's like no I can't tell I can't tell. I'll let you know I'll let you know. And you kept dragging it out. And finally we found out. You got put up as one of the WPT players to watch. How about that, yeah. Miami boss? Yeah, bro, it's fun, man. So tell me, awesome. so tell yeah, me a little bit about that when they. Some, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <clears throat> My hands said I can't really hear though. But uh, yeah, we did some uh, like we did like some green screen and uh, Bogota. That was awesome. Like we did like two hours worth of like uh, tape, and it was cool. I had a lot of fun. What did that bad mean? Bad tournament, though. I, oh, man, I did real bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I busted. I was in for two bullets. Oh, man. Yeah, w, it, it was, WPTs ones to watch, man. I'm traveling around. I'm going to play a lot of WPTs this year, so uh, hopefully I pop one of those off. And I'm going to Montreal next month like to make the final table again like I did the last one. A little, but I want to do better, though. You know, I want that trophy, man. Oh, it's all about the. It's all about, the, you know, it's all about that first place money. You know, they can keep the trophy. I just want the money. Oh, you bet, man. It, it's coming, Dan. You know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. Yeah. Playing well, real good in these tournaments, so. Well, what did, what did that mean to you to be named a WPT one to watch? I mean, obviously, th that means that people are recognizing you and your abilities. But personally, when you, and, and you're very confident. Everybody knows you, you got that swagger going. But when, when someone actually recognizes it at that magnitude, what does it really mean to you deep inside? Yeah, I was very honored. You know, WPT is a huge brand in poker, and um, I was just, I was just, uh, yeah, it's awesome to do. You know, I think I'm one of the most entertaining players in poker right now. You know, it's good for TV. So, get one on one of these final tables, man. It's getting the, the ratings on Fox Sports One gonna be off the charts. You betcha. And well, you know, like I think eight Latin, eight Latin girls going crazy in the stands. Oh, they do that for you anyway, though. Yeah, I know, but we got to get that on TV. No, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let me. Uh, now, I'm curious to hear for you, for you now, in terms of the marketing, and and you know, you now you get that on your resume, and everybody knows that you're an incredible player. But from a marketing standpoint, I think you're one of the guys that gets it. You know, you put out, you put your personality out there, you put yourself out there as much as you can. You know, you seem to get it. How important is that? And why do so many other players not do the same things that you do when it comes to marketing? Yeah, I can't really, I don't really know what everybody else does, but I just do my own thing, man. I've always been myself, uh, you know, and um, I just think, yeah, it's definitely good. It's definitely good to have your name out there and whatever, whatever sport you do, you know, you want to be obviously on the top and, you know, you want to be entertaining because our sport entertains people, you know, that's what it's all about. You, get, you know, I, I bust people out of tournaments, and, like, I was in Montreal, and guys were, like, coming up to me, and like, whoa, man, I had so much fun playing with you, like, the last couple of days, it was, like, it was just awesome. I was like, thanks, man. It's pretty cool, you know, it's a great feeling, even if you bust them out late in the tournament. Like, I'm usually on tilt if somebody busts me out. I don't want to even talk. I don't even want to look at anybody. <laughs> well, you know, I think that's a, that's a, a, a statement about you and your personality, that 
people, you know, you you bust somebody out and they're like, hey, man, it was fun playing with you. And they, you know, for a little bit, at least they forget about the fact that you just knocked them out of a tournament, probably cost them a lot of money and made them feel bad later. But, you know, you bring that extra fun aspect to the table, which is something that I th- I think is missing right now in the game for sure. Oh, it's yeah, there's definitely a huge gap right now. Like, you know, if everybody's at the table, nobody's talking, they're on their iPad, like, man, it's these some of these terms just get real boring. Everybody's on their iPad or on their phone or just not saying it, you know, like it, it's just it's pretty brutal. But he's like, Yeah, be on your phone once in a while, but like, you know, we're here to have a little fun too, you know. We're, obviously we're here to have work and we're having money trying to make money, but you gotta have fun whatever you do. That's what I like to do. You know, I think when you're having more when you're having fun you know, you're playing better, you're running better, everything's just, you know, you just can't, you just can't be on your iPad the whole time playing poker. I just, I don't think it's really good for the game. No, and I think that's something that we've, you know, we've touched on a little bit on the show in the past year, that it's become, for the, a lot of the, especially for the younger players, it's become such a business for them. And, you know, they're coming in, they're they're getting putting their hoodies on, they're hiding away, and, you know, they're just trying to pick off a little bit of money, but they forget that part of, what makes poker great is that social interaction and when you when you lose it it hurts the game and you know that guy who's maybe the casual player maybe sitting down with somebody who's a very boring player watching their ipad and gets cleaned out isn't going to want to come back as opposed to if they're playing with somebody like you who, you know maybe you're going to beat them but at least they're going to have a good time doing it exactly that's the name of the game you know you have you know, the, the big fish, they, they're here to have fun. You know, they know that, that like, you know, the chance of them winning is not not huge. They're, they're there. They have extra money. You know, they want to have fun. That's so, you know, we got to entertain these guys, too. You know, it's poker, poker worlds get, you know, <clears throat> it's not like it used to be back in the day where the fields, every field was just like, you know, 800 players for like every 10K in first place was like 2 million, you know? Yeah. So how's the uh, first card off the deck rule working out for you, by the way? Me, I'm actually. I, I hate. I hate that rule. Actually, I, 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 I tweeted about it a little bit. I'm not like like a lot of people like were really into it, but like, yeah, I think it's a really bad rule for poker. But I, I, I haven't heard of one accident. Anybody like you know, breaking their leg to get back to the table to hear, see a hand. <laughs> I never heard of that, but, um, you know, I, these guys. Yeah, that you know, some rules you definitely need, but I don't think that one's really. Yeah, I mean, it's it's generating a lot of discussion, that's for sure. Yeah, it takes a lot of fun out of, like, you know, you can't, like, go see your friend see how he's doing real quick next door or anything like that. Like, you need to be at the table. I mean, I, I like to go walk, you know, stretch a little bit. And, like, you know, because you, you're sitting down there. They have you sitting down there. Some of these tournaments you're playing for, like, 10 hours, 12 hours, day ones, where, uh, you know, you, you want to be up. You know, you can't sit down for 12 hours. You're going to, you know, you need to get that blood circulating, get your mind going, you know, like you get 15-minute breaks every two hours. But, yeah, you want to take a walk for five seconds and then you come back and, you, like, they're just mucking your car. It's just kind of brutal. Well, you know, we just had Tom McAvoy on here a little while ago who made the comment that he feels, and and a couple of the other senior players feel, that no one under 40 is ever going to win the main event again because – of the long days and and you know, you mentioned it you know sometimes you're gonna you're sitting there playing for 10 to 12 hours a day you know do you think that that's that's a realistic uh, viewpoint that it's going to be very hard for an older player to succeed because of these long days yeah you know these old you know the older players you know they you know they like to watch their jeopardy and go to sleep after so like they can't be uh you know they can't be up all night like the young kids you know they they get a lot of they got a little more stamina but I think somebody under forty will probably win it once one day. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna happen a lot because I just think there's more players playing these like more events that are under forty. So would the more you, the more you know. Well, would you advocate you know what Tom had said was you know to shorten the days up a little bit and maybe make them like an eight hour day, um, you know as opposed to a ten or twelve hour day? Would you would you be ex- would you get, you know think that's okay to do that? No, I don't mind playing 12 hours, actually, just because uh, in these big tournaments, like, you know, if you shorten those days up eight hours, now these tournaments, instead of four or five days, they turn into seven, so that you, wherever you are, you, you're playing longer, and then, you know, it takes longer to make the money, you're spending more money on hotels or food and everything, like, just the cost goes up so much more, because when you're at a tournament, you know, most of the time you're traveling to go there, so... 
you don't really have other things going on. You like you're there for that tournament. I don't mind playing the long days because it's you know it gets gets the job done. You know. Yeah, that's a very good point. By the way, correct myself. Uh, McAvoy said fifty. Thank you, Casino Examiner. My bad. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Jesse. And I have Jesse Caps here too. Jesse, you have a, you have a question for Miami Boss here? I I'll, I gotta let Je- I gotta let I'm him about, in here. Well, I'm about to get some headphones so I can hear oh, okay, exactly great. what you guys are saying. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, how you doing? How you doing, Miami Boss? <laughs> What's up, bro? I was uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to report. I worked for Poker News this summer, so I was able to see you in action in some of the side events, and uh, you were very entertaining to watch. Thanks, bro. Yeah, no problem. Actually, can I? Th- do you have a spot for these? Um, I need that splitter. Oh. Yeah. oh we, splitter? We, yeah, we have splitter. Oh, we got all sorts of stuff oh, flying around perfect. here at Quan International. Can, you betcha. And I can hear you. Uh, yeah. You coming in. Well, you know, and I, I think you know, I think it was an interesting point too, Dan. That you know, I talked about this on our KLAV show. Um, that when we, uh, you know, we were discussing about the Aruba event that just happened that had a smaller prize pool, you know, and but it was in a more exotic location as opposed to the Heartland Poker Tour event that had, you know, the first, I think first place was, uh, you know, about twenty five or $30,000 more, but it was, you know, an HPT event in L.A. What, what do you prioritize when you travel? Do you want to go to a place where you may be playing for less money, but you're going to have more fun and maybe in a more exotic location, or do you want to go where the money is? Me, I'm a prize fighter, man. I want to go where the money is. Like, <laughs> if I'm going to travel, I'm going to play. You know, I don't mind. It's great. It's definitely great to have, like, a nice location. That's, like, a perk. But, like, I'll go in the middle of nowhere and play poker because that's that's from there. I live in Miami, bro. Like, I live in the party capital, dude. Like, it doesn't matter where I am in the whole world, dude. Like, the parties in Miami are the best, dude. Like, you can't compete. There's no – you can't really compete. Even Vegas doesn't really compete. Wow. So – Wow, there's some people that might take exception to you with that. What? Why is Miami better than Las Vegas? Oh man, why? Well, it's just that you know the girls are a lot. I think the girls are a lot prettier here. Like you got, there's more like regular girls too. Like Vegas, you got like so many strippers. And can I say strippers on the air? <laughs> you, we're on the internet. You can say whatever you want. Oh, this is like HBO, right? Yeah, I can hell yeah. You can say damn it, right. shit, whatever you want. Go ahead, have fun. Exactly, Larry David. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just you know the. the like the, just everything's better. You got to- a lot of tourists here too that just come to party, and you know the clubs are open till five. They're going, they're popping until five. You got, you know, Libs. I think Libs the best cl- nightclub in uh, the whole U.S. Definitely the U.S. It's definitely the best club in the U.S. and possibly the world. I haven't been everywhere in the world yet, but I just have a blast down here. The, just the feel so much better in Vegas. You just you know you're going into casinos and that's where all the hot nightclubs are. And then you know what everybody does after the, the the nightclubs end? They go gamble. In Miami, you know what they do when the nightclubs end? We party more. Ah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do have. That's a qu- what it's all about. I do have a question for you. So so who who do you take? Who do you take to the clubs? Is there some poker players in there? Is it strictly just you know you and your girls? Like who who's your who's your posse? No, I take um, I go I go out with a couple of my buddies uh, that live in Miami. We go out poker players once in a while, but no, my boy Paul King and my boy German, uh, we party with them. I party with them. We have a good time. And like, yeah, they, we take out like a bunch of girls and stuff. It's a good, it's a lot of fun. And so I'm guessing, obviously, when you uh, guys go out, you you make sure you get the VIP booth. You get the, you know, I mean, it's it's do a big go big or go home. I'm assuming. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We, yeah, you haven't hung out with this guy. Oh, no. I, no, no maybe uh, yeah. ne- next time he's in Vegas, or I'll definitely be coming in April for you just, sure. No, you just got to follow me on Instagram, bro. That's how we do it. <laughs> Miami boss, bro. What's your, what's your Instagram? Miami boss. You're going to be entertained. Miami boss. Miami boss? Yeah. Of course. Good. All right. Well, well th- let me ask you this, though. When you come to Vegas, what is your favorite spot in Vegas to go to? To party? Yeah. Um... I like uh, Marquee on Mondays. is really fun. And, um, you know, Excess is not bad. It's always, like, you know, you always have an okay time. Hagasan was cool. I, I've been there. I only went there uh, twice this summer. Because, um, you know, I was, I was really focused on poker a lot. I didn't really party that much because I just think the parties are so much better in Miami. So if I'm out there working, I just want to work, you know. Um, but, yeah, Hagasan was, was cool. Um, but, yeah, I would say Marquee is probably – Probably my favorite club. You know, just pick up the hottest chicks. 
<laughs> this is funny, though, because when I say, what's your favorite place to go in Las Vegas? He almost sounds disappointed, like it's a horrible place to go. <laughs> and, you know, Miami is just so much better. It's like, you know, it's like going to a little a- uh, peewee club or something, you know? Yeah, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of Vegas. Like, I like what, just because you're there, for, like, that place is not meant to be there for, like, I'm there for, like, you know, a month and a half. That place is there, meant to be, like, you know, you go there for, like, four days and then, like, then you go home. Like, you're there for a month and a half. It's just, like, you're in a desert, bro, with, like, <laughs> well, know, casinos. Well, you know, there's there's other places to go. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can find it. You, you know a couple of fun places around here. No, I, I have a you good. T- I have a lot of friends that live there, and I have a good time going out there. But me, I just, I just, I like Miami. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, where are you headed next? What's uh, what's coming up for you here? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Montreal, which, you know, I'm gonna, I fell in love with that city last time I was there. Not just because I final table the uh, WPT. I just, I just love that. Like, man, the girls there, everything's cool. Restaurants are great, you know. It's not too overpriced, and uh, you know it's cool. It's cool seeing like just another country. Like it's like right. It's like you know, it's right above us, but it's like a whole nother world out there. Everybody's speaking French, and you know, eating eating croissants, and it's just it's just a party over there. You know, it's a lot more relaxed. Everybody, you walk around in a major city or over there, man. I felt like so safe. I was walking around at nighttime, just like you know, doing my thing, man. I never looked over my shoulder one time, but the French people are so nice up there. Wow, that's awesome. What, where do you want to go in the world? I mean, obviously, you, know, you said you haven't been everywhere, but what would be some places that if you if you could go tomorrow, where would you go right now? If I wanted to go tomorrow, where? Where, where would you go? Anywhere in the world. Where would I go tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Anywhere? I'd pro- I want to go to Bali. Bali? Okay. Well, yeah. what, what's, uh, what's on the docket in Bali? Why, we wanna, why do you want to go? I just heard, you know, I just a couple of people told me that the place is like amazing, and like, and uh, it's just like really secluded and everything. Like they just like chill. It's like really re- laid back, relaxed. Like, you know, the most, and I think the most expensive thing is like the air ticket too. Like everything is just cheap, and it's just like you're on the beach, like beautiful beaches. That's not bad. That's a good combination. <laughs> cheap booze, exactly. Cheap booze and beautiful women. Even if I can't say it, it sounds really <laughs> good. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, it, well, you know, Dan, I am I'm very proud of you that you got to be named one of the WPT players to watch, and you know, it would be awesome to see you bring one of those uh, WPT championships home and get on the cup. Yeah, bro. I would. I I I can only imagine what uh, what something like that would mean to you at this stage of your career to pull it off. Yeah, it would be huge, man. I, I'm definitely, man. I'm playing my heart out. Bogato is uh <clears throat> Man, it was a, that was a great tournament too. That WPT man, they had like thousand all. I mean, a thousand, but like I think it was like twelve hundred players, man. It was a huge field. It's it's crazy up there at Blue Borgata, man. I and mean, obviously they're yeah. moving the, they're moving the championship out there next year. I mean, yeah, it's, it's all it's time, a, man. It's a neat place to play. Bellagio's been dead forever. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's. I mean, that shocked me a little bit when they did it. I mean, you know, I understood. I understood why, but still, that kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, oh my god, they're moving a major championship out to Atlantic City. Wow. Yeah, they should do that like three. I think they should have done it a couple of years ago. There's Bellagio. There's not really, like, I don't know. They they just don't do it anymore. They used to be the spot, but you know, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think AC is the spot right now for tournaments. Man, they they just run everything great out there. All right. Yeah, but of course, you know, nothing like home in Miami, right? <laughs> Give me before I let you go. Tell me real quick, if someone came down to Miami for like two or three nights, take me yeah. through a run with them through Miami with the Miami boss to have the ultimate time. Oh man, depends what night, but uh, yeah, because each different night is a hot, cl- different hot club, you know. But like a Friday night would be like something like uh, actually I'll just start, like last night I went to last night was kind of crazy. I uh. Picked up this chick last night, and then we went to uh, – first we started off at, at Story Night Club. That's where the Heat had their championship party. You saw it, like, on Fox News and stuff. And then um, and then I went to set, and then I went to live. So it was like a – you know, it was it was fun. We went to, like, three clubs. I, I, just, I like to hop around a few spots, you know. just We just party, man. It's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, it, for those that missed it during the World Series, speaking of those – damnable Miami Heat. I had to do push-ups because I lost a bet to Dan. Yeah, that was sick. That was horror bad. Oh yeah, that was right. horror <laughs> bad. 
So I'm going to find a way to get revenge for you on that. You do know that it is coming, correct? Yeah, bro. I'm back at the gym, so uh, I don't know. Those syrups are not going to be as hard as they were in Vegas because, uh, yeah, Vegas, I was not working out at all, man. It was brutal. Yeah, it's well. tough to work out when you're in Vegas because I, I, I never I never rent a car in Vegas. I'm always drinking. So like it's just, <laughs> it's just like a why do like just take a ten dollar cab ride to like back to Palm's place, back to you know the Rio like because that's you, you can't do anything in Vegas without drinking. You go bowling, you go might like you know hiking in the Red Mountains. Or what is it? The Rock what is it, Red Rock or whatever it's called. Like yeah. you just drink. I don't know. Like it's just twenty four hours. You're on the strip drinking like. You're on the side of the road drinking. You're in the casinos. You know, you're at the wow. strip clubs. That That's about right. alcohol everywhere. Yeah, that's about right. Where are you at right now, Mark? Are you in California? No, I'm 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 in Las Vegas. You are in Las Vegas? Yeah. Are you, are we, are you drinking right now? No, I'm not. I, I could be, but, you know, I'm still on air, so I'll, I promise I'll uh, break the sobriety soon. I, I will. Yeah, it's 24 hour alcohol there. You guys, you know, there's no last call. You got to get a couple drinks in. Yeah, that's a good point. I had a, I had two already. <laughs> <laughs> well, just two though. I'm just I'm, I'm not going out tonight. Sunday is just you know. Well, you Sunday got, fun day. Yeah, you got to you got to take one break every once in a while, you know. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. Sunday is even though I live on Sunday is amazing. It's hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> He's already thinking about. It. He's like yeah, maybe maybe no, I should go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Hey, well, hey, I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. I really do appreciate it. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. Go up there in Montreal and get your name on the Champions Cup. Man. We want to see it, man. I'll tell you what. You know what? Bam. We'll be, I'll be on here if I pop off that WPT, bro. Let's do it one time. Well, I'd, I'd hope you'd call me and fly me up. Yeah, I'll, I'd send you a text. I'm like, yo, I just, I just won WPT. And then I'll send the pitch with the Latin girls like next to me, you know? <laughs> Well, you can get a couple French girls in on that too, then just for fun, just to mix it yeah, up a little those bit. Those French girls are not bad, man. Like a little Menage a Trois yeah. action. <laughs> they, got, they got nice names: Ivy, Tuba. Um. Bro, well, I was talking. I was talking to one of the Montreal girls, uh, that, like live up there, like one of the massage girls, and she was like, she wasn't even saying like, I'm like, you, have, I'm like, you have a boyfriend? And she's like, she's like, no, I don't have a boyfriend with a French accent. I have a lover. I was like, that is awesome. I like, I want to be a friend. Like, why, why can't more girls do that? I don't know. I don't know either. But, they do. They but, do, actually. You know, what you know, whenever the situation comes up with the ladies, Dan, Miami boss, has it under control. That That's always a thing. So, bro, so I, I don't care how hot she is. I will walk up to that girl, and I will talk to her. I, I got the best eyebrows in the building, man. Like, what are they, what are they going to do? They, they have no they idea. They are pretty good. I give him props on that. He does what, have good eyebrows. Pretty good? Come on, bro. They're the best in the game for sure. Nobody <laughs> in the poker world has better eyebrows than me. <laughs> you don't hear too many people brag about that, right? <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, everybody's got something, right? Everybody's hey, got it, something. You know? All right. I got my eyebrows, so, you know, I'm, I'm the best at that at least. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, hey. You guys have a blast, bro. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. I will speak to you again soon, my friend. Stay in touch, all right? All right, all right homie. All right. Peace. There we go. Dan Sway, the Miami boss. <laughs> Jesus, is he something else or what? I mean, come on. I mean, I haven't smiled like this in a while. You know, he's, oh. he's entertaining. That's what happens on this show. We get all the crazies. <laughs> but he is, But you know, aside from the Miami boss side of it, he is one hell of a poker player. And, you know, you know that at some point that major championship is going to come for a guy like that because, you know, w even with all the the bluster and the, you know, putting the, f the public face of I'm the Miami boss, he is very serious about his craft. He works hard at it. You know, he wouldn't be where he is if he wasn't an outstanding poker player. And I, th I think his time's going to come pretty soon. So Absolutely, yeah. No. So that was keep, a fun conversation. <laughs> keep your eyes peeled for the Miami boss, man. Maybe he'll win that Montreal event. That would be cool. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, I believe there's a tournament going on. All right. Oh, I can't, I can't wait. I always And, and for those of you that, that missed all the sound effects, I'm, I'm trying to – let's see, which one should I go with? Let, let's do this one. Can the beaver come out and play? Yes, he can. <laughs> all right. Let's take a break, everybody, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Thanks for joining us here on Sunday night live from Las Vegas at Quan International. Make sure you go to projectallin.com. What? I'm. She's letting me do the show here. I'm giving her plugs, and she's making fun of me over there. I'll get Christina on here in a little bit. We're gonna take care of that. Vinny's over there cooking hot dogs and having a good time. He's pointing to me. He's like, "I want you get a hot dog. You stop plugging me. You sound silly." 
but you know it's all good it's all clean fun up here we're having a blast so so let's take our another break and we'll be right back guys get in that tournament club id 629454 password is rogue wire of course we're here on rogue wire now so keep looking at roguewire.com some great stuff happening let's take a break we'll be right back when it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize oh. it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, 